Welcome back to the channel guys. It has been quite a bit since I've done a pickups video so I figured uh, I would end up doing a pickups video for you. So before we get started with my pickups video I actually have something else I want to show you guys that I'm really excited about. I just want to show it to you guys because uh, again like I said I'm excited about it. So we're going to go ahead and pop on over there and take a look at what I got for you. All right, so I got you out here, and it's a little bit windy, but that's okay. You might be wondering, what am I doing looking at a shed? I want to show you guys something else besides gaming that we do that my wife and I are interested in. Uh, the pandi tem pandemic kind of took it away from us. So uh, now that the gyms are actually open, we decided that uh, we weren't going to go back to the gym. We decided that it was better in case the pandemic came and closed our gym. So. Let's take a step on inside. And close our door here. So we built ourselves a nice little home gym. Ooh, fancy. Yes, before the whole pandemic, my wife and I were avid, uh, avid goers of the gym. Uh, we were avid fitness buffs, runners and whatnot. I'm probably trying to throw some stuff up on the screen prior to that. But uh, recently we decided that uh, we needed a nice little uh, space to go work out. See my wife's yoga mat and her foam rollers and all that. Okay. Obviously a barbell, because you need a barbell. But then we got my wife's weights and then some kettlebells. And then just recently came in after a very, very long pre-order period as our select tech dumbbells. And then obviously a bench that's adjustable. As you can see, very adjustable bench. Small, but functional. It's not retro gaming related, but it's a part of stuff that uh, I'm interested in and things that I like. So I wanted to share it with you guys. I'm pretty proud of our little setup here. Staying healthy and fit is an important thing. And so I figured uh, might as well continue it up. And just to prove to you that I did it before, I'll go ahead and do some reps for you. I ain't gonna lie, after I shot that, that was probably like my third or fourth shot. Not that I'm trying to say that, you know, I couldn't handle it or anything like that, but uh, it's good to work out. It's good to work out in your own space again. So I'm not gonna goof around too much more. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump, I guess, right into it because I got quite a bit of stuff. So let's go ahead and start out with the uh, first thing that I've got here. This actually came in the mail. I pre-ordered this uh, back in, I think, October, but uh, it's the uh, Tolaplan Sega Genesis collection. I have not actually opened this yet, but uh, when I do, um, I might, I don't know if I'll do something like that on camera or not, but uh, it's got your little thank you, and then you got your uh, little, little cat's pin that you can uh, put in there. That's kind of neat, yeah. Um, they're uh, reproductions of uh, your famous uh, famous toll playing games. So you have Truxton, <clears throat> Hellfire, uh, Tiger Shark, and Zero Wing, which are all really great shoot 'em ups on the uh, Genesis, as well as uh, I know Truxton, Hellfire, and Zero Wing were on the PC Engine too. I have uh, Zero Wing for both the the Genesis and the PC Engine, and I have Truxton for the Genesis, but I do not have uh, uh, Hellfire on the PC Engine or the Genesis until now. Uh, and I don't have uh, Fire Shark until now, obviously. So that was uh, one of the first things I got. It's been a while, I've been waiting for that for a bit. Um, guys saw in a previous video, I went ahead and got a 
uh, Neo Geo AES. So of course, if you have a Neo Geo AES, why not have another fighting game? <laughs> uh, it's King of Fighters 95. I found it and uh, decided to pick it up. It is complete. Got our KOF 95 original cart, and then we got our KOF book. So you can actually figure out how to execute the moves. So I'm not a major King of Fighters fan, but I do like it. I like old Terry Bogart and Andy. So yeah, I picked that guy up. Uh, something I don't show a whole lot. I have quite a few of these uh, games for, but I picked up some games I found relatively inexpensive on eBay for uh, the Vita. So I have uh, God Wars Future Past, and most of these things don't come with manuals, but you can tell it's original artwork on there and everything like that. So that's good. And then Dungeon Traveler, the Royal Labyrinth, uh, Royal Library, and the Monster Seal. Sorry, I'm trying to look at it here. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, same thing. These things usually don't come with manuals anymore. Uh, the Vita was at a time of death of manuals. I still continue to look for Vita games when I see them and, and they pop up. Uh, you know, best place to find them I've had has been eBay. Every once in a while, you'll find a nice retail release that's in a GameStop or something like that. But usually, you don't find them uh, very often. So I do go peruse the internet quite a bit for Vita games because I actually really like playing my Vita and I, I, I take it with me. Uh, it was what I used to play with before I got my Switch. And uh, I'll tell you what, the. Uh, I look at the Switch and I look at the Vita and I still think to myself today that, uh, man, if they had just made a Vita 2 or Sony had just continued to support the Vita, how amazing it would be. It's going to be a major loss with the uh, Vita store closing here. So not that I bought a lot of physical or digital games from uh, the Vita store, but yeah, for sure, not a good thing. Uh, this was a game that was originally an Xbox game, but they re-released it on PS4. So I figured I'd pick it up. It's a uh, Metal Wolf on PS4. I haven't actually opened it yet. Go ahead and open it. Uh, totally over the top. Um, kind of like mech shooter. You're the vice, vice president is trying to overthrow you. And um, come on there. There we go. Nice and see. The vice president's trying to overthrow you and you're the president and you're inside this giant like mech and you go there and, and go and try and fight back. And so that's kind of a bit of an awesome uh, concept. It's, it's supposed to be real tongue in cheek humor. Uh, I've seen some stuff saying the controls on it were kind of wonky, but yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, if it's a, uh, it, it was originally an Xbox game, so I can't imagine the controls are that wonky on it uh, com in comparison. Um, let me see here. What else do I have? We'll go ahead and do my GameStop stuff here that I've got. So uh, I saw a ad pop in my email about GameStop one day uh, having the Cyberpunk Collector's Edition uh, strategy guide on sale. And uh, it was on sale for 12 bucks from $40. And then I had like some coupons or like gift certificate or something like that. So it only ended up being like $7 from 40 bucks. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up. I really like that game. I finished playing it all the way through on PC. And I'm just kind of waiting until they do more updates with the console versions of it uh, before I try it out on console. But I do intend to play it again on console, so. It's a good game. I think I put, I didn't go through every single side mission or anything like that, and I put over 60 hours into the game, so it's always good. Uh, we were going through GameStop uh, the other day while well, we were picking up this uh, this um, strategy guide here, and then I swear it looked like it was going out of business, but uh, they had a couple of games for inexpensive. My wife is a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, so we got the uh, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory for my wife she likes that on switch and then this one was one i was kind of curious about i uh, i heard it's a puzzler and i thought my wife might like it i mean i get that it's very like uh dude centric japanese but my wife is big into puzzlers and i figured she might enjoy this one she liked like captain toad and i know this is not anywhere close to like captain toad but i figured if we'd give it a try and it was on sale for only like 20 bucks or something like that so definitely picked up a uh, catherine full body 
I know, I know, you're all are thinking all pervy out there, but don't worry about it. Uh, this is one I wanted to pick up physically. I had it digitally. Uh, I would play Duke Nukem as a kid on the PC, and I absolutely loved it. And I haven't actually opened this yet, but I actually picked up Ion Fury. So Ion Fury, if you guys don't know, was made in the same engine as the original Duke Nukem uh, 3D game. So, uh, female protagonist in that one. Uh, the game's actually pretty fun. Uh, it's still on the Switch eShop, and it looks like they have a few more copies through 3D Realms' website, because that's where I got mine, was from 3D Realms' website. Oh, whoa, whoa, all right. Where are we at here? Uh... Let's uh, we'll segue into this one. So, you guys know by now, I'm a I'm a Bomberman fan. I like Bomberman games, and although this is not a Bomberman game, it is a uh, a spinoff of the Bomberman series. So I got Robo Warrior for the NES. Uh, I got it complete because I'm kind of looking to try to go for the uh, whole. Uh, Bomberman complete in box set. I know that there's a couple really expensive games out there and I don't know if I'll ever achieve that goal but everything in here is pretty good condition. I don't know if I'll ever achieve that goal or not but uh, you know <laughs> it's not to try and uh, the one I got here the label is in really good shape. It's actually uh, in Japan was known as Bomber King but uh, in the US here we got Robo Warrior so uh, it'd be fun to try that out on the NES here and see how things are. It's very similar in the way that you play the Bomberman with a little bit more of a different kind of strategy to it. Uh, continuing on with my Bomberman theme, I kind of went nuts. Uh, I didn't do an import video because I only got a few things on the import, so nothing too big to get a video on. But I already have these on uh, the US variants of them. Uh, complete so I figured I'd get the Japanese variants of them. It's Bomberman Generations on the GameCube and Bomberman Jetters on the GameCube as well. Again, I have the um, They're complete So they have everything inside Including the little card that came along with it And then there's a little poster in this one There we go little poster so uh, just collecting to try to, like I said, get my collection up. I got a lot of Bomberman stuff. Uh, this one here is kind of a, a odd one. It's one you can't play anymore because the servers are down, but it was super cheap and it was still sealed, so I got it. It's a Bomberman on the net, which is kind of like Bomberman Online for the Dreamcast, if you guys have ever played that one. Uh, this is pretty much similar to that, but again, the servers have been shut down. I'm sure there's possibly fan servers out there for it that you can continue to play, but I'm just probably going to leave it as part of the collection because I have ways of being able to play Bomberman through other means, like I have, bomb I have the Bomberman Online for the Dreamcast, which I'm sure is better. Uh, what else did I get? Uh, another spin-off of the mainland Bomberman, which uh, I don't usually get very many Wii games. I'm not much of a Wii fan, but uh, I did get Bomberman Land for the Wii, and that is complete. Not a common one to find. You don't see that one very often. There's a lot of mini games in there, and, and from what my understanding is, the same team that did uh, Mario Party is the same team that developed, or at least worked on some of the stuff for this game, so it's kind of got some of that Mario Party element to it. Um, continuing on, get a little beginning of Game Boy Love. So I found this. I actually had a card-only copy of it, but I found a box copy for not too much. Uh, Bomber, Pocket Bomberman. Uh, it's kind of like an adventure uh, action game. And because the, uh, the US one is cool, but I, I really actually like the uh, Japanese variant case. I had to get the Japanese variant case as well. It's the, it's in these little like tin things. Super cool, when you open them up, you got, you know, you're, ah, you got your game and you got your manuals and stuff like that inside the tin. So it's kind of neat. And then when I got this one, I actually happened to found Bomberman GB3, which is again, a game I have cart only. Uh, but this one also came complete with all the little goodies and stuff like that inside of it. So, continuing on, 
Pretty sure Bomberman's gonna eat this entire thing. <laughs> uh, this is something I found online in Japan, and I just uh, had to pick it up. It was inexpensive. Uh, it, it means something to me. It's not like super ultra rare or anything like that, but it is uh, Saturn Bomberman as a demo disc, and not for resale demo disc. So it is a Saturn version of Saturn Bomberman, but it's in the demo disc format. So it's not a full game, but that's okay. And then. Uh, Kind of top it off here, let me move some stuff out of the way so we can kind of make some room. I just decided since I was going to go down this route of collecting Bomberman stuff, I kind of went a little wild with picking up some of the old literature for it. So I got some strategy guides for Bomberman World for the uh, PlayStation, and then the Brady Bomberman 64, as well as the Prima Bomberman 64. And then I'll save those for later. And then because it's kind of cool that there's more of these things that came out in Japan than there was in the US. So I have this game on PlayStation 2. So I found a uh, Japanese uh, Bomberman cart strategy guide, which is kind of neat. Again, I can't read this stuff, but uh, it's neat to have. Uh, so I picked up quite a few of them because they were really cheap. They're only like, like a couple hundred yen. So uh, Bomberman Land for the PlayStation. Again, kind of neat. What else did I get in here? Uh, Baku Bomberman 2 for the N64. It's kind of a neat. I like their like size. They're very compact. I like that a lot. Bomberman Hero for the N64. Again, this is the Japanese uh, guidebook for it. And then this one here is kind of interesting. It is a uh, Bomberman Jetters uh, uh, Game Boy Advance guidebook. I found that one there. Again, only like a couple hundred yen or something. It was not, not very expensive. And then I did find this and I picked that up. It's uh, Bomberman Maniacs, which is a Japanese uh, in-depth look at the Bomberman games up through the Super Nintendo. So. It covers all of the uh, Bomberman games up through the Super Nintendo, which is kind of interesting. I like it. Let me pull these out here because uh, these are going to be part of another thing that I got. So I just wanted to pull them out so they're easier. And I can roll, I guess, into my segue here. It'll be a little bit longer. But then again, like I said, this is, I haven't done one of these in a bit. Uh, I did actually get into uh, something I didn't expect that I was going to get into, but that is into finding on some arcade PCBs that I was actually interested in. So in order to play those, I had to get a super gun. So if you guys don't know what a super gun is, super gun plugs into the JAMA edge of the PCB and then you can use like an ATX power supply or you can use an arcade power supply. You plug it in via SCART, it uses Neo Geo plugs on this particular one. And this board's got a bunch of different things that you can use just to be able to play arcade boards on a TV. You use something like a, like a Retro Tank or a, a OSSC if you have one. And the reason I got that is because I done did it. I should be banned from the internet sometimes. <laughs> I swear to my wife. She's always wondering what's in the boxes. But then after we play, we always have a good time. So, I have got a couple arcade PCBs. So this one here is Head, uh, head Panic. So, Head Panic, if you don't know, it's kind of like a like a clone of, uh, how do I put it? It's kind of like a clone of um, Bubble Bobble. If you guys have ever played Bubble Bobble on the NES, not the Puzzle Bobble version of it, but the actual Bubble Bobble that they had in the arcade and you had on the NES. What else did I get? I didn't go too wild. I just found some pretty decent uh, games that, uh, that were reasonably priced and that were working. Uh, they may not have been in the best condition, but that doesn't matter to me. As long as they're playable, I guess, is really all I care about. This 
one here is a Crime City that's a Taito arcade board. So I got that one. It's a side scrolling shooter. Not like a, well, a shoot 'em up, side scrolling shoot 'em up. So, uh, you know, you, you have like a, a gun and you can get more. And I swear they, I'll, I'll try and gameplay footage up there of it, but I swear they drop bags of cocaine and you're picking up bags of cocaine. So, I mean, it's definitely 80s flair there, especially with the uh, shooting people, robbing a bank, and taking their cocaine from them. I don't even know. Uh, let me move and, and put this back in its box here, because uh, well, I'll, I'll move it out of the way, because I don't want these things to get damaged. Uh, next one I got, this one's a much bigger board. It's also a NES game, but uh, I got the arcade version because somebody had it on line for, you know, and it's inexpensive. So I was like, you know what? I will just go ahead and pick it up. But it is Silkworm. You guys don't know, this one is a side-scrolling shooter. Uh, it's two-player, so the cool thing about this one is that uh, one player gets to be a helicopter and the other player gets to be a Jeep. So that's kind of cool. It's uh, games you play on MAME, and then you're like, ooh, when you see it, and you're like, I gotta get. Now now I have the opportunity to actually play them. Have a means to play them, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. All right, and now we're coming to the end. Well, almost to the end. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't know where I put that other piece that I had. Where did it go? That's nah, okay. We will come to the end. It was a mod for my NES, but I don't know where I put it. But that's okay. So, last but not least, we got another box here. We'll go ahead and open up. And I'll share with you guys what I got inside. It's a couple more arcade PCBs. So, in this case, we have a very clean, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it here, we'll go ahead and try to focus in on it. This is Bomberman World. This is actually a Bomberman World PCB. Uh, it's set up to be able to have a, the kick harness put into it, but I don't have a kick harness for it. Maybe something to look at in the future. I'm not really looking to collect arcade PCBs. Um, I wanted to have a few. I'm actually realistically more interested in uh, that. Uh, what is it? it just came out. That Mr. Cade that just came out. Uh, but they only have like CPS two and uh, CPS one and a few other things. Eventually they'll get more as they come out, but um, we'll see. And then if I have Bomberman World, I gotta have the original Bomberman arcade game. Both of these are on Irem boards. Uh, I got this specifically because it, I played these as a kid, you know? So it's like, uh, my dad and I used to go to a nickel arcade that was by our place. And um, the nickel arcade by our place always had Atomic Punk, which is what it was in the US. And he and I used to play it constantly. It was in the well, by the time we had started going there, it was in the discount like budgeted area or whatever it is. So it was only a nickel for play. Well, some of the other games might've been like two or three nickels to play. And just as part of the nostalgia, I actually was able to get the arcade owner's manual for Atomic Punk. And so flip around here. It's got a little bit of writing on it, but it's okay. And then Atomic Punk 2. So this is the actual manuals for uh, the games themselves. And then uh, with the PCBs, I actually got uh, the Japanese variant manuals for Bomberman World and the original Bomberman. I guess I got more than one. It's part of it. And then when I bought the board, this guy threw this in there. I don't know if he was interested, what he was trying to do by throwing it in there, but it's actually a really neat flyer. It was free, so I mean, I'm not really going to complain too much about it. It's not a game I have, but I wonder if he like mistakenly added this in here, but it's kind of a neat thing. I can get it open. It's in really good shape. 
It is a giant Knights of the Round poster in extremely good condition. Again, like I said, it uh, he threw it in as part of the uh, deal. I just it was in there when I opened it up. I actually thought it was part of one of the arcade uh, board setups, but no, it's a Knights of the Round poster that came along with it. So. I can't figure out where I put that other thing at, but that's okay. Basically, uh, I was gonna say my NES, uh, I've been trying to complete the RGB mod on it, but I've been having trouble with uh, deciding how I'm gonna do the pinout on it to make it easy to use. And so I bought this uh, board um, and it uh, basically converts it to a Genesis 2 and uh, mod on the, you know, let me show you, I got my, I got my NES. So, on the back, it takes and gets rid of the RF switch and this channel selector and then turns it into a Genesis 2 and an S video port. But it's a drop in, no cut mod board, so that's kind of neat. Because I was really struggling with uh, cutting into the plastic of my NES. I know that there's a whole lot of them in there, but sometimes with your childhood stuff, you don't necessarily want to do that. But anyway, guys, that is a lot of stuff. It's over a couple of months, though, so it's not like I was like hitting it hard all the time but let me know what you guys uh if you like anything i picked up uh let me know if you guys got anything uh that you picked up that uh, you thought was cool i'm curious to find out what you guys are doing uh, if you don't already make videos and you just want to make you know notes in the comments that's okay i'm happy to hear and chat with you guys that that's what i do this for it's fun to to meet people and chat with you online and if you guys are other youtubers i'm happy to check your videos out too and, and do that i'm just here having a good time with the community and that's all i really like to do on my channel is show off some of the stuff that i got so love to hear from you guys in the comment section below and i will check you guys later on the next video bye for now